Well, it's good to be together and have an opportunity um, to get together, to be equipped and encouraged in the things of the Lord. Um, uh, my ministry is called Full Speed Impact, and I've been working together with Tom for about eight years or so. And my ministry is to mobilize believers to walk in the fullness of Jesus Christ and impact the world around them uh, worldwide. And so part of what I do is, is help believers to be the church outside of the church. Um, and today I really want to focus on uh, recovering the church as a movement of rapidly reproducing disciples of Jesus Christ. Because we've sort of all come to know Christ and inherited the church as an organization. And organization, by nature, tends to be stable, stagnant, and, and like set in one place. And one of the things that I've seen over and over that's really interesting, if you look at the New Testament, Jesus in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, he said, All authority has been given unto me, right? In heaven and on earth. Now, Therefore, go make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to do everything I commanded you to do. And lo, I'm with you always, right? So the big deal is make disciples. Yet, we have kind of inherited uh, church as an organization, and when men or women of God begin to show promise and a sense of calling and a sense of character, very quickly, they're thrust into like a seminary or a Bible college where they're equipped to be a clergyman who makes congregations instead of to be a, a disciple-making discipler, right? And so we're taught things sort of backwards where we create a church or make a church in the hopes of making disciples, Instead of making disciples and seeing the church become a gathering of disciple and making disciples. So we do it backwards and as a result we end up with a lot of people in church who aren't disciples of Jesus. They're born again and they want to follow him. But disciples aren't born. Disciples are made. There's a process that people uh, undergo and it's what Jesus did with his disciples because you know, when he said, now go make disciples of all the nations. Nobody was like, well, what's he talking about? Make disciples. How do we do that? You know, he, that was what he's been doing with them for the last three and a half years. He's been pouring into them. And so I want to kind of recover some of the basics of what disciple making is. In Matthew chapter, Mark chapter 3, verse 14, it says that Jesus appointed the twelve to be with him so that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to cast out demons and heal the sick. So Jesus' method of ministry, get this, was relationship. Was relationship. Correct? Yes. And so when he says, go and make disciples, teaching them, the, God is a father, so he homeschools his children. Right? So the vehicle for teaching... The vehicle for teaching is relationship. How many of you have heard a sermon? You're like, yeah, that's good, but I've got this question, that question, that question. How do I live that out? Like, I wonder what that looks like. And so relationship becomes the vehicle because people are influenced more by what they see and experience than what they hear. And Jesus is the Word made flesh. We have become living letters by the Holy Spirit. So the Word is being made flesh in our flesh through the Holy Spirit now. Amen? And so there's a process, there's elements of disciple making that I think, you know, we hear that word and, and different things come to mind. For some, it's a program. See, they come in and, and, and you know, they raise their hand, they recommit, get plugged in. Right? And so there's some distractions. We, we, we view disciple making as a program to get plugged into. Come in the beginning, go through these series of classes. Boom, you come out the other side. Walking in the fullness of Jesus, right? Maybe not. Or we substitute endless Bible study for disciple making. And so. And, and, you know, I love the Bible, don't get me wrong, but we need to be doers of the Word, Amen. not just learners of it. So, if you're not careful, people are taught the Bible over and over, but they never learn how to do it. Where is it that we can do it? So, I want to show you something else in Mark chapter 3, verse 14. It wasn't just relationship, 
it was training. Amen? In the context of personal relationship, there's training that's happened. In, in Luke chapter 6, verse 40, Jesus says, When a disciple is fully trained, he will be just like his master. When Jesus started this whole process off, he said, Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Right? You're not going to get there by yourself. I'll make it. I'll so invest in you. I will so pour into you. I will so train you that you're going to become that. So I take responsibility for those who are willing to walk with me and follow me, meaning Jesus, right? And so this is really important that we understand. And so I tell people, like, imagine that disciple making there's like an, a, a, that is like cake baking. And we've been taught that we need to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. But by the time the recipe has come down to us, you know, a lot of things were scratched out. And, and it just looks like crack five eggs, whisk them together, put them in the oven at 375 for an hour, take it out, let it sit. Boom, there's your, there's your disciple cake. Why does it keep looking like scrambled eggs? <sighs> because there's ingredients that you're missing. Teaching is the first ingredient. Teaching. You've got to teach people what the Word of God says. But teaching people the commands is not teaching them to obey. That's different. And we think, okay, I taught you the commands, that means you're going to obey. No, teaching, you need to, sh ne the next ingredient is you've got to show them. Take people with you and show them. So when I teach people about how to experience the fullness of God in, in the Spirit, I'll actually take them. This is how I do it. This is how I use the Word of God to enter into the Spirit of God so that you can actually experience that you are in Christ, seated in heavenly realms. Right? This is how I heal the sick in the name of Jesus. This is how I start conversations with unbelievers out on the streets. This is how I take somebody who is a believer but not a disciple making disciple and take them through the process of equipping them so that they can be a fully equipped uh, believer walking in the fullness of Jesus Christ, impacting the world by reproducing Jesus in other people. And then not only show them, you need to let them do it while they're with you. <laughs> Amen? You, if you just are the ball hog, then when are they ever going to get to shoot? When are they going to get to pass? When are they going to get to dribble? Well, but I'm the superstar. I don't want to pass it off to them because they're not going to be able to get it as good as me. Well, that's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and it's not even the way that Jesus did it. Amen? So one of the things that's neat in... in in Luke chapter 9, 9, it says, well, in Luke chapter 8, verse 1, it says that Jesus was entering into villages and he was healing the sick and preaching the kingdom and casting out many demons, and the twelve were with him. So, the other element is that part of this training is that we need to have discipleship involves relationship, training, and mission. See, sometimes we get discipleship as being personal, and so we have relationship, and we'll sit down over and over and have coffee and talk about life and pray for each other, lick one another's wombs, talk about a Bible verse, that kind of thing. You know, that part of that is really essential. But let me ask you this. What, you're, what you are and what you're doing is what, what you're going to reproduce. So you're just reproducing other people who can be very pastoral. But the foundation of the church isn't laid on pastor teachers. It's apostolic. Amen? So that means you're sent. And so we need to have a wake that we're bringing people with us, right? We need to have people water skiing behind our boat, right? Woo! You know? And I love to do that. So one of the things that I like to do is take people with me. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, when are, when are you doing it? Come on. Bring people with you. So, you know, when we're at home, we like to have what we call meander shopping. And we let people know, well, Monday night, we're going to be at the Super Walmart, 7 o'clock. If you want to meander shop with us, bring a Walmart list. And we're going to take a couple hours to, as you go, shop. But we don't go shopping anymore. We go make disciples and pick up some groceries on the way. Right? And we have people with us. And they see how we strike up conversations. You know, hey man, you know, it looks like you just got off work. How was work today? 
and get a little conversation going. Let me ask you, is there anything I could pray for you? If God were to do a miracle in your life today, what would it be? I'd love to pray for you. I'd like to pray for my friends and neighbors while we're out shopping. And you would just imagine how many people get healed, people get saved, people, uh, you know, you encounter people. Sometimes people are like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty good. Could I just pray a blessing into your life and just uh, you tell me if any of this makes sense to you because I'm just learning to hear from God, right? And they begin to see how you prophesy, how you heal the sick, how you uh, go out into new areas. And then what do you do with them when they believe? How do you make the most of every opportunity? How do you take people out? Matthew, uh, in his sermon earlier, talked about in 2 Kings how the strategy of the enemy was to keep people holed up behind a wall. And my concern is that the church is on defense and that the church buildings, the campuses, now our approach is we want people to come in here because they're thinking, well, the people that come in here, then we can do something with them and eventually they're going to start giving. And, you know, what if... What if we were the carriers of the kingdom of God and that wherever we went, we could launch new moves of God? But I'm not just talking about a miracle here, a, a, a sign and a wonder there. I'm talking about that you so release Jesus that people hear Him then from you and, they, and you have become, your life has become a picture of what this looks like. Well, here's the thing that's kind of interesting. That starts in Luke chapter... Eight, Jesus was starting from scratch, but he had 12 with him. Amen? People that he had said, come follow me, I'll make you. I'll, I'll teach you how to do this. I'll invest in you so that you can walk in all the fullness that I have. That's what he said. When a disciple is fully trained, they'll be just like their master. So don't sell yourself short. That's what disciple making should be. Many of us have been sidetracked because we've only been taught how to use our gifts. But the Word of God says, you've got more than just your gifts. You've got Christ in you. Amen? And so, by equipping, you can actually do more than what just was coming out of you supernaturally natural as an accident. Right? You can actually plug into and tap into prophecy, the apostolic ministry, healing, evangelism, all of that stuff. But the only way you're going to get there is through disciple making. Somebody has, is, has to give you hands-on mentoring uh, and training so that you can get from what it says in Luke chapter 2. And this has been kind of neat to me. It's a conversation I've had. How many of you feel like, you know, I, I want to make disciples, but there's a lot of people around me that they're just born. Some of you are like, you know, I, don't, I, I want somebody to help disciple me. <laughs> you know, and, and I felt like that for a long time. Uh, but I, I'm encouraged because I really see God raising up a movement of, of people who've rediscovered that the Christian life is not attending meetings over and over. Or attending meetings and healing the sick out in the street and then I'll bring you back to my meeting. Right? There, you are to be uncaged, unleashed, fully equipped so that you can be an effective worker in the harvest. So Luke chapter 10 verse 2 Jesus says God's vision of the world is like this. Pray to the Lord of the harvest so that He might send workers out into the harvest. So He's talking to His disciples. He's sending 72 others also. That's Luke 10. You know where Luke 10 came from? Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, Jesus sent the 12 out, two by two, right? To go into every city and village. And they went out. What did they do? They were commanded, heal the sick cast out demons, do just what I've been doing, and bring the message. Now, one chapter later, Jesus is showing them rapid reproduction. The people that now they've brought, now they're being sent out to do the same thing. How did they get from harvest to worker in the harvest? Disciple making. Disciple making. Someone had a relationship with them. They trained them. They gave them an example, not just teaching, teaching, showing, letting them do it, sending them out so that you can feed, make sure they've got it on their own, verify, and then release them. Amen? Jesus is doing that process, that training process, but they're on mission. Listen, we grow best as we are serving Jesus in the kingdom. 
Don't wait to serve Jesus in the kingdom until you've got it all figured out. You're going to grow for a lifetime, but Jesus is modeling with His disciples rapid reproduction. Listen, through multiplying disciples, we can absolutely see Jesus and His glory and His kingdom manifest throughout the world. I saw this uh, recently. I did a, a mission trip to Kenya. And the last afternoon, I asked, how many of you have been out with one of our teams already? And they raised their hand. I said, I want you to come stand up here. And I said, now, I want you to take somebody who's still sitting down. Two by two, go out into the city. Now, don't stop until you've led at least one person to the Lord and seen at least two people healed to peace. Right? They came back the next day with testimonies after testimony. We got that done in 15 minutes. You know, There was just revival taking place. The bishop who was hosting that, he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, Brother Andy, now I know what revival looks like. This whole time I've been praying for revival, 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 and I've been imagining that that would mean that our church buildings are filled. But now as I see everybody walking out, into the streets filled with Jesus to bring the kingdom. That's what revival looks like. It's an equipped church who's walking out in the fullness of Jesus Christ, arm in arm. So if you haven't done it yet, guess what? I can show you what I've got. Amen? So, because this is yours too. Because Jesus said, whoever believes in me, the works I do, he'll do also and even greater because I go to the Father. Listen, Jesus Christ not only healed the sick, not only cast out demons, not only led people to Christ, he made disciples. And so the vehicle through, for advancing kingdom mission in our lives is you. It's discipleship. So if you're here, I know a lot of times... Tom has a great gift of being able to see people's gifts and their callings. But to be gifted and called is not necessarily the same thing as being equipped to do. And so if, that, if that's you, I want to let you know I, I have a mentoring program. It's online, but I'm also personally available, especially for people around here. So I'd be happy to help you. Um, uh, also check out some of the books that I have back there. I'm not trying to sell stuff. I'm trying to make stuff available because this is stuff that I had to sweat through blood, sweat, and tears, discover, rediscover in the Lord. And what's awesome is seeing the body of Christ go from a congregation of attenders to a community of disciple-making disciples who are walking in the fullness of Jesus to advance the kingdom in their, in their world. Amen? And the only way to get from here to there is rediscover that and have somebody walk you, help disciple that whole process. You are the, you are the answer. You are Jesus' answer. Amen? All right, so God bless you. Thank you very much. Pleasure.